Uh, hello there, and welcome to my beginner's guide uh, to Austere. Uh, to start off, you're going to want to build an MG42. You're going to want to bring your uh, pioneers here, and you're going to want to start making your tier 1 of the infantry company. I'm not going to pretend I know how to speak in a German accent. Um, from there, you're going to want to set like, your rally point for your MG, usually somewhere around the fuel or munitions, depending on the map. In this case, we have white ball. Once your tier 1 is going to done, you're going to want to send your pioneers in the same direction. And you're going to want to get your tier 1. Uh, you're going to start building some grens. Uh, the normal build order here is going to be three grenadiers or two grenadiers in a mortar team if you're up against British or if you're up against uh, maximum spamming, which you won't know until you hit the field. I recommend when you select your MG to press the A button either here or by pressing A on your keyboard and moving. That's going to be an attack move. Your MG, well, as soon as it spots something, will start setting up and uh, start shooting at it once it's in range. You're going to want to try and keep your Pioneers by your MG42 uh, because Pioneers have extra vision, 42, compared to the average squad of 32. Or 35, sorry. And that's going to help your MG set up because it only has 35, but it has a range of 45, meaning it can shoot at things that it can't see if you can get there. So here we're going to do, we're going to A move our MG here. We're going to put our Pioneers on the fuel and we are going to start building a sandbag. We've got our Grens coming in to support. And uh, we have enough manpower for another Grenadier, so we're going to do that up mid, maybe. Grenadiers, it is time to go. As we're waiting here, you can see I'm making sandbags. I'm putting them behind the flag, uh, so that way the enemy, if they push us off, it's a lot harder for them to use. And then you can barbed wire it, if you have the resources to. This MG's not set up, so we're going to set that MG. Okay. Pioneers are going to stay by the MG in case they flank it. Okay, we have the uh, fuel because it's standard AI. So with Grenadiers, you want to keep them at long range. So honestly, staying here in this position where we're well entrenched is a good idea. Especially since uh, the rest of the AI is doing well. We're going to get our third uh, Grenadier since we're up against USF and uh, Soviets, it looks like. Terrible cover. Uh, we have time, so we're going to reset up this MG on the cover. Just because we have so much time because we're up against the air, we're going to barbed wire this off. Barbed wiring off the uh, opposing side will just prevent them from using said cover. Another thing you can do is if it's yellow, you can put your sandbags over there, and it's green cover for you, but yellow for them. So it's just, you know, better off for you. Okay, we're going to help take mid. Oh, we already have our Grens there. We're going to rotate Pioneers over, I guess. Standard AI died. Um, usually at these sort of situations, uh, you know, your, uh, pioneers would be under fire. Oh, you need to get your tier one. So let's say we're going to bring in our pioneers. Wow, the AI is just getting destroyed here. Anyways, we're taking damage. Oh no. You could bring up your, uh, MG, but you risk it getting cut out. So we'll just retreat our pioneers there just cause. And we could have had the pioneers build another sandbag for these guys. Get them good and well entrenched. See, here you go. You have the Grens in front, providing a screen so the MG can spot and just suppress. And it's just layers of defense. We're going to bring these Grens around. I'm go for the munition. Okay. Just want to make sure we have two VPs and a fuel and a munition. Otherwise, you can you can just ignore your teammates as long as that's what's happening. You guys are on the wrong side of cover, so we're gonna move them around. Our tier one's done. We're gonna build that. Okay, we have enough munitions for an MG 42. We're not gonna get that. We are instead only gonna get one right now. You want to get those LMGs as soon as possible because we're going to build a medical bunker after we finish this tier two. You can either get your tier two. Or the medical bunker, doesn't matter the order, it just really depends on how things are going, progressing. Um, usually I'd prioritize the medical bunker over tier 2. Okay, we have that done, so we're going to make our medical bunker. We have enough munition, or manpower to make a tank, or not tank, a scout car, the half track, or the uh, anti-tank gun. Uh, you're not going to want to get the anti-tank gun until about 6, maybe 7 minutes usually. Unless you're really struggling against a universal carrier.
we have to get rid of the Bounced off. Treat them. So, oh, I did screw that up. Here's what I'm talking about. You don't have the thing, and these guys need healing. So, the half track's good if you want to do forward reinforce. So, for example, we could bring in a half track here um, and start reinforcing, you know, this this cancerous position we've set up already. Um, the 222 is good. Um, again, instead of getting an anti tank gun, if they have like the Universal Carrier, the Scout Car, or the, you know, the Soviet Scout Car, or the M20. Uh, otherwise, uh, it requires a lot of micro to be used effectively. So I wouldn't recommend it for new players, except for those situations. Um, so you're gonna get your half track. We have a fresh half track at and at this point, you would usually consider um, getting something that either your, one of your commanders has, if they have like elite infantry, um, a Panzer Grenadier uh, for their bundle nade, another MG, or a mortar. In this case, since we're just gonna play around the fuel, we're gonna get a mortar. I need to reinforce our squads. Um, what's nice about the half track is you can heal on the field, so we don't need to get our squads around here. I'm gonna move them up. I'm gonna try to set this down even more. Where's other guy? Back. Okay. Of course, if you have a lot of manpower because you're not taking any attacks, like we are in this situation, um, you can start building caches for your teammates. You can see that's what the AI is doing. Um, yikes. And then, usually at this stage of the game, I mean, commanders depends on, you know, what stage of the game you're in, but usually for a new player for Austere, I would recommend either getting, like, an elephant commander or something with a, like, 12 CP, 11 CP, 10 CP sort of, uh, munitions ability, like, uh, Stuka close air support, some type of artillery, something big and flashy is usually really good. We're gonna build a second sandbag for these friends. Uh, tigers seem like they're good, uh, but I don't recommend it. Uh, they're a very big noob trap. We have our mortar going off on these guys. We're gonna bring these. We're gonna reinforce this squad. Again, we have the forward reinforce, so you can start it at your base. Again, if you see, I'm A-moving my Grens, especially once they get LMGs, and they're engaging at long range. Combined with the mortar support, you can see that they're doing a great job. Um, once you move them into position and you're comfortable with it, you're going to want to put them in cover. Just keep their distance. And as you can see, they're slowly winning that fight. And another thing you can do, since we're doing a Cancer Squad Retreat, there's a grenade. Soft Retreat to here. Reinforce off your Half-Track. Oh, well, as you can see there, I lost my Grens. It's going to happen. Have I have avoided that? Yes. I could have. Um, a thing to note is Pioneers and any other Engineer team, while they are repairing or building, they take bonus received accuracy and received damage. What this means is like, Borders cannot normally one-shot your troops with full health. If you are repairing or building, they can. So anytime you get caught out building stuff, the fuck is the AI doing? Um, you want to stop it immediately. I do not know what's going on here. Anyways, we're going to want to get our tier, or battle phase two. I need to retake this thing there. Also, what's great about the half track, uh, which you won't see often in 4v4s, is you can upgrade it with flame projectors, uh, which makes it really good against infantry, but it's also very squishy. Um... Uh. At this stage, you should have gotten a pack gun a while ago. Uh, that's my mistake. And then as your battle phase 2 is finishing up, you're probably going to want to... Well, we'll wait for battle phase 3. But I'll build the battle phase 2, or the tier 3, just to show what's in it. Um, a lot of the things aren't very useful for new players. But there are some things there you can use in case of an emergency. For commander, we will just go. I recommend. Take. Defensive 
As you can see, this is why I needed my AT gun. My grenadiers are just suffering here. You can bring up the half track. I did it earlier to reinforce. You don't want to bring your half track into combat, really. Um, it gains vet by nearing, being near its infantry. Another thing you can do if you don't want to use a half track since that costs fuel is you can make a bunker. Okay, you guys can't reinforce while they're inside. We're kind of sitting here peacefully. Because that god is the act. Another thing you can note with your mortar is it does have a smoke barrage, so if you encounter uh, MGs, you can smoke off those MGs or use the mortar barrage. Make our tier 3 here. And while that's going on, we're going to make upgrade for Battle Fist 3, which will allow us to build our tier 4. Okay, at around 15 minutes, you're probably going to want to get a second pack, um, especially if you are like even on fuel. If you're ahead on fuel, you don't need that second pack, uh, but here's what's great about bunkers is instead of getting them the machine gun, which you shouldn't do most of the time, you can do med HQ in the uh, command post. Okay, so with your tier 3, you have the Stug, which has 50 range, so it will be outranged by pretty much all allied TDs, uh, meaning it's sort of useless, except against medium tanks, uh, and... Heavy tanks, and if you're just desperate to get some anti-tank on them. Uh, you have the Flak Panzer, uh, which is good at infantry, against infantry, but that's pretty much it. It's pretty squishy. Um, it takes four AT hits, but it has very minimal armor relative for medium. And then you have the Panzer IV, which is a good generalist. Uh, it also only takes four hits to die to an AT gun, though. Um, and until it gets side skirts, it will always be penned by most AT guns, except for the USF one. Uh... So that's something to keep in mind, which is why I'm not really recommending them. Instead, we're going to go for the Tier 4. So if you're a bit ahead, uh, you can get a Panzer IV. Uh, if you're even, for your first unit, you can just get a Panther, because unlike allies, the Panther sort of serves in a multi-role purpose. Oh, another thing we should do is we should get another Gren, because we really don't have a strong mainline. Having just two Grenadiers with their snares is just not to cut it. And a half track. Two ways. Okay, we can recruit this weapon here. He's going to reinforce based off the half track. This half track needs repairs. Or bring in our, con or, uh, pioneers. If you notice, that is the enter troop icon, so you're gonna have to manually either hit E or click on the icon here to repair it. We now have a second MG, so we can set this one up here. I would recommend setting it up on the VP. Uh, so actually, let's go so do that. Don't do habits. Make sure the arc covers the VP. I'm gonna bring some pioneers to be in front. Just enough so they're providing vision, like before. Half track back a little. Now, this Brunbar is very effective against squads, but it has slightly less range uh, than other tanks, so it does need to get a little closer. Um, this is a good option, except against Soviets if they're going penals, or they have some guards, because it can very easily be buttoned, uh, because it needs to get closer. You have the Panzerwerfer, uh, so if you have things locked down like you do and they're constantly pushing into you and they're having a lot of infantry, uh, this is what you're going to want to get. Uh, rocket artillery is more effective the closer you can get it. So the closer you can safely park it behind your lines and like the closer you can bring it to the front, uh, that's what you're going to do. Uh, but we're going to get a Panther for our first tank. Again, in a realistic match, you'll probably have to get a Panzer IV or a Stug, depending on the situation. Uh, don't bother with an Oswin because you might as well save up and get the Panzerwerfer instead, if you're looking for anti-infantry, or the Brumbar. Uh, Brumbar as a first tank is usually not a good idea. Anyways, the Panther, um, despite what it looks like, makes you think it's an actual tank, like it's good against everything, like the Panther IV, 
Uh, its main gun is not. So the first thing you're going to do when it hops out into the field is you're going to put it on vehicle prioritization. You want it shooting at vehicles, you'll let the MG that you're going to build on it kill infantry instead. And the uh, hull mounted and pencil or, and coaxial MGs. Um, in desperate situations in which you know there's no enemy tanks around, you can right click or turn it off the vehicle prioritization. Oh my god, I forgot about these grenadiers. Um, and there they go. So we're going to leave by this. Uh, that's something you notice is your rally points. You don't want them like that. Anyways, just right after this. We're going to put it on prioritized vehicles. And now we're going to go hunting with them. Uh, what's useful with the Commander I picked, for example, is we have recon. But as you can see, we have a fresh grenadier squad. Fire! Okay. Did we have our pioneers standing around? So what we can do with them? Have them build sandbags for the uh, grenadiers, so they get green cover instead of their yellow cover. Um. Yellow cover is usually better than no cover, uh, but when you're up against tanks, usually your squads will clump up in yellow cover, uh, which makes them more vulnerable to like explosives, like mortars and tank shells. So that's something to be aware of. Green cover reduces damage they take from tank shells and mortars, as long as they're you know behind the cover and you know the tank doesn't flank around. Anyways, something you're going to note is you saw there was a vault icon. What I do to avoid accidentally vaulting is you hold your mouse button like that and then drag. And then release, I should say, not drag. So, and that's why you'll see me directional face it. You'll see the icon. It's just to make sure you're standing where you want them to. Grenadiers. Oh, God. Anyways, so Grenadiers also have a rifle nade, which has longer range than on their grenades. Very good uh, for dealing with MGs. What, what are these friends? So uh, I'll spend the rest of this game going over the rest of the roster, showing you their abilities. That's red smoke. You're going to want to dodge. When you see red smoke, just move your troops. Sometimes you're going to want to retreat. If it looks like that smoke's been there for a while, you're going to want to get out of there. I don't know what that smoke was. Must have been a decoy. Uh, but usually that'll indicate planes or artillery or flames. None of which is usually good for your boys. There's an enemy scout car. So that. Uh, another thing you can do with the half track is this... Because uh, it's closed up, the enemy doesn't know what's in it. So another thing you can do with it, if you have CQC infantry like Assault Grenadiers or Panzer Grenadiers, is you can drive up to the front lines and avoid an MG and then flank it with your squads, since vehicles cannot be suppressed. They drop. Pickers? I do. Anyways, we're going to do off the AI for a bit. Just going to build the rest of the roster here. Collection, resources, add each. Oops. Half track has arrived. Scout car has arrived. Stuke three ready to deploy. Up cap. At a hundred. We go. Flak panzer has arrived. Storm panzer fear is reporting for duty. Okay. You do. Territory points, which flies all. There we go. Okay, so first up out of these units. We have been assigned fresh okay, we have the scout car. Scout car does all right against everything, including light vehicles, um, but it's not particularly amazing. It's mobile, and it gets infantry detection, and it has very good fog of war vision, which you can see. Uh, it's vulnerable to being snared because it's a light vehicle, and uh, it can die to small arms fire, as you can see as it's driving past. You can see it's got a nice vision radius of 50, and it takes two AT gunners. Same with the half track. Okay. Next is the Stug. 
The Stug has 50 range. It's a tank destroyer. It rotates all right, and it can be upgraded with the pintle mounted, which is pretty cheap. Only 30 munitions. That's pretty much all there is to say about it. It's sort of like a, an emergency thing. Ostwind. It's pretty fast. It can shoot down anti air, which can be useful if all of the enemy is spamming planes. Uh, but other than that, I wouldn't get it. It can have Panzer, with Panzer Tactician, it has smoke, which is useful. And then with Vet 1, it has Blitzkrieg, which allows it to go faster. That's all you really need to know. Panzer 4, good against everything, also has a pintle mount. Uh, upgrades like that take time. I just did speed ups. It does alright against everything. Um, it'll bounce on mediums. Uh, it'll destroy light vehicles. It does alright against infantry if it hits. And then it does have the pintle, which helps a lot. Alright. Up next, we've got the Brumbar. It's got a big gun. You can also get a Pintle. The Pintle is less effective than other MGs. But bam. It does a big explosion. It takes a while to reload. And then with its Vet 1, it has Bunker, bust, uh, bunker Busting Barrage, which is extremely useful. It's a long-range ability, uh, which you can use to take out MGs, uh, AT guns, and then trench positions. Just make sure you're not in the arc of the AT gun when you do decide to fire it, which is where stuff like recon or pushing up with grenadiers comes in. Okay. Up next, not least, is uh, the Panzerwerfer. It suppresses slash pins enemy infantry, and it has good range. And then as you see, as I'm mousing here, you can see the area of effect widens the farther out I go, and then it tightens the closer I am. Which just sort of, you know, goes to show what I would say about artillery range. And uh, last but not least out of the, well, ah, again, not last, we have Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, with their Vet 1, they move faster and are harder to hit and just more effective when they're near vehicles when they have Vet 1. Uh, combat. Veteran C. They will now have an icon above it, and you can see they are slightly faster, and they are a bit better at combat while near vehicles. The radius isn't super big, um, but it is something to note, especially if you're doing like the half track stuff. It can be useful. Yeah. Here's the radius. Okay, now last but not least, something I definitely don't recommend to new players, um, and even players like me struggle to use is sniper. Uh, it can cannot shoot at vehicles. Um, it cloaks while in cover, and uh, it is a one-shot, one-kill on all infantry or like team weapon crews. Um, but it is extremely squishy and vulnerable if caught out. Uh, with its vet one, it gets the incendiary shot, which basically allows you to double shoot with it. Um, it has 50 range, meaning you can snipe even MGs if you're careful. Half tracks probably. Great. And then with vet two, it can see as far as it can shoot. Oh, that half track is really not doing well. at demonstrating how squishy. Get a little closer, just see. and you can see a burst. Pretty much just, just an, wow, that half track is just not doing well. well that half track's a terrible demonstration. But as you can see, it's one model, so it's pretty squishy. Yeah, it's struggling against a mortar crew. It gets slowed when it shoots. All right, that's pretty much all I have to show you for this guide. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, just put them down below. Uh, I will try to answer any of them. And uh, I'll see if people like this, I will do another one. Anyways, thanks for watching.